Do you ever wonder where your searches go? Who sees them? And who profits from them? In today's digital age, our online privacy is constantly under threat. Every search, every click, every website we visit leaves a trail of data that can be collected, analyzed, and exploited. But what if there was a way to search the web without being tracked, without your data being collected and sold? There is. It's called Cirque's NG. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up our own meta search engine called Cirque's NG. So Cirque's NG is what we would call a meta search engine. And this means that rather than relying on a single search engine for our results like Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo, Cirque's NG pulls results from multiple search engines that you do get to control into a list on your Cirque's NG instance. So let's take a look at my instance of Cirque's NG that I've got set up. Uh, we'll kind of poke around some of the settings and that sort of thing. Then we'll go over to their GitHub repository and dig around there a little bit. And then we'll take a look at getting Cirque's NG installed for ourselves. But before we get to that, we do have some bills to pay. So here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. Thanks to DataCamp for sponsoring today's video. Now look, you know how much I love exploring new tech, especially when it comes to self-hosting and Docker. But lately I've been diving into the world of cloud computing and I found a perfect platform to level up my skills. And that's with DataCamp. Now, DataCamp isn't just some boring online learning platform. They've got a massive library of interactive courses and their cloud computing track is seriously impressive. Whether you're a total beginner or you've already got some cloud experience, DataCamp has something for you. They've got courses on everything from AWS to Azure to Google Cloud, and they cover a wide range of topics like machine learning, data engineering, and even cloud security. And the best part is their courses are actually taught by industry experts, so you know that you're getting top-notch instruction. But here's the thing that really sets DataCamp apart. They don't just throw a bunch of dry lectures at you. They've actually got this awesome hands-on approach where you actually get to write code and work with real-world data in their interactive exercises. Plus, you can learn at your own pace, so you can fit it into your busy schedule, even if you're juggling a home server setup like me. Be sure to check out the video description for a link and more details. Trust me when I say that your future self will thank you. Okay, so this is my demo instance of Cirque's NG, and I actually love how simple it is. We've got a logo, we've got uh, our search box, and then at the very bottom, we've got some just information about our instance, as far as what it's powered by, the date, uh, of the build and, and that sort of thing. And that's really it. Uh, if we take a look at the top right, we can see that there's an about section or about link and a preferences link. Um, the about is, is exactly that. It talks about search ng or Cirque's ng. Uh, we've got about, we've got search syntax. We can kind of take a look at both of those. I don't want to run through that. You guys have got better things to do than listen to me read to you. So um, instead of doing that, let's jump over to the preferences page over here, going back to the top right. And here we can get an idea of how much control we've actually got over what we're going to search for, where we're going to search, defaults, things like that. So this is our general uh, preferences page right here. And we've got, uh, again, the logo, our preferences. We've got some tabs across the top. We'll go through those a little bit. But right now we're on the general tab and we've got some default categories uh, that, we can, that we can choose from. By default, general is selected, but if we want to add images to that, if we want to add videos, news, maps, music, IT, science files, or social media, all of those are available for your toggling preferences to help you dial in kind of search results you're looking for at any given point. Below that, we've got our search language, which is uh, auto detect by default, but um, there are a lot of languages in here that you can choose from if auto detect doesn't work for your instance. We've also got uh, autocomplete, and you've got some different ways that you can have autocomplete work um, by basing that off of, I guess, I'm guessing different search engines here. Um, by default, there is no autocomplete enabled, which I kind of appreciate, again, for the, the at least the mindset of not having something trying to predict what you're thinking. Uh, sometimes, sometimes those autocompletes can get a bit out of control. But um, below that, we've got a fav icon resolver. Uh, by default, there isn't one in here, but I believe by, by changing some of the available settings that you can add a fav icon resolver, but by default, there isn't one in here. Uh, we've got safe search, uh, whether you want to have that enabled or not. Uh, by default, it is none, but there's also strict and moderate for options there. 
Uh, there's a basic calculator if you want to use that. We've got a host names plugin um, and you can enable that or turn that off. We've got an auto access DOI rewrite. I'm going to be honest, um, I'm not entirely sure. Apparently that is uh, a result, re revolving around avoiding paywalls. That's my assumption there. Uh, and avoid paywalls by redirecting to open access versions of publications when available. So it looks like you can turn that on. I think that's a good idea. Uh, we've got a unit converter plugin. So I dig that. I love having that available. There's also an open access DOI resolver. Again, that I guess has to do with restricting access to open or, or re redirecting to open access versions of things. And you can kind of choose which one you want to use there. And then we've got engine tokens for private engines if you happen to need one of those. And of course, as you're going through each of these different tabs, if you change anything, be sure to click save. Next, we'll come up to the user interface tab where we've got uh, the option for language, theme. Um, you know, theme is simple by default. Uh, again, I'm assuming you can probably add more to those or more, more themes to this if you'd like to do that. Uh, theme style, uh, auto, light, dark or black. Again, completely up to you. Uh, center alignment, whether or not you want that to be centered, again, up to you. Results on new tabs, I actually really like that. Uh, I've actually got this set up on my Chrome instance so that when I search for something and I click one of those search results, rather than having it overwrite my current page, it pops it open in a new tab. I really dig that. Uh, infinite scroll is an option here if you don't want to get to the bottom and have pagination across there. You can do an infinite scroll. Just understand that that may uh, be a bit of a memory hog depending on how far you're scrolling in your results. Uh, search on category select and hotkeys. You got a different couple of different options for hotkeys there. Uh, next, we've got privacy. Uh, how do you want your HTTP method to work? Do you want it to be post or get? You've got an image proxy if you want to do that. Um, query the page's title when enabled the results page. The result page's title contains your query. So that's up to you as well. And then tracker URL removal uh, is enabled by default. And I appreciate that. Um, up here next, we've got engines. And this is the page that I think a lot of people, this is what they're going to be here for. Um, and again, we've got all of those other um, tabs that we that we saw earlier as far as what we want to search for, you know, general images, news, map, music, IT, science, files, social media, and other. And on each of these different tabs, we've got a, a, a slew of different options that we can enable or disable depending on how we want to get our results uh, just by toggling uh, the little boxes or the little sliders over here on the left side of the page. There are also um, some additional things in here um, that you can use to say, if you want to translate something, kind of a little shortcut saying, you know, uh, exclamation point or bang, translate or DC or web, or like you can, you can basically use shorthand when you're searching for things to help expedite some of your searches. Uh, th that goes farther down here to tell you, you know, is safe search available for these different things? Is time range available? Um, so there's different things in here that you can configure for whatever your needs happen to be. And again, this was just a general tab. There's also images, videos, news, as we kind of discussed briefly a moment ago. And you can toggle each of those to your preferences, again, to get the best possible search results for whatever you happen to be after, whether it's across the board or in a particular moment, you can change those on the fly. Next, we've got special queries uh, where you can um, uh, see a list of search or <laughs> Cirque's NG's instant answer modules. Uh, they, they've got a list of plugins uh, for uh, different hash uh, plugins, uh, self information for user agents, and Tor check. And then, of course, we've got cookies. And this is the list of cookies and their values that Cirque's NG is storing on your computer. Uh, with that list, you can access or assess. Uh, Cirque's NG transparency. So lots of good stuff in here. But what I really love about this is that that's it. Like that's how simple it is to go through here and configure each of these different things. Um, I encourage you to uh, do what we're about to do and head over to their GitHub repository to look through uh, to look through that. So let's actually do that real quick here for just a moment. Um, so this is their GitHub repository as per usual. Everything will be linked in the video description. Um, but you can see here that they've got, you know, Docker Compose, they've got an ENV file. Um, and it says, you know, the Docker Compose files for setting up a Cirque's NG instance with Docker, um, you know, and then here's more information about how to do that. Um, and there's actually, uh, I think if we scroll down, yeah, it actually says that there are a couple, yeah, there are two ways to host Cirque's NG. The first one doesn't require any prior knowledge about self-hosting and thus is recommended for beginners. 
Now with that, and we'll take a look at this a little bit later, uh, they actually do include a reverse proxy in the Docker Compose. Um, however, we're, we're not gonna use that. I've actually created a Docker Compose that we can use in lieu of cloning the repository and that sort of thing. However, each or either option really is acceptable depending on your comfort level. And that was that's all kind of explained here uh, in this. Again, I encourage you to read through this if you're not familiar uh, if, or if you're just getting into self-hosting and you're not sure about some of these things, I definitely encourage you to look through here and read as much as you possibly can about Cirque's NG. And I'll try to have as many links about the service available for resources and that sort of thing, again, linked in the video description. So if we come back up, in fact, let's 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 scroll down to make sure. Um, yeah, so there there's uh, image again more information about reverse proxies, uh, image proxies, uh, multiple architecture Docker images. It supports uh, desktop and ARM processors, so that's good. Um, and then just how to update. Again, all of this will be linked in the, the video description. And if you really wanna do a deep dive and get more information about different ways to configure Cirque's NG for yourself, you can go to docs.cirque'sng.org, again, link down below, where you can uh, get a lot more information about different configurations, installations, all kinds of really, really good information about Cirque's NG is available here as well. So again, I can't emphasize enough, be sure to check out the video description for more information. So coming back to the GitHub repository here, um, if we take a look, say for instance, at the docker-compose.yaml file uh, that was updated just three weeks ago, which I'm glad to see, uh, if we open that up um, and scroll down a little bit, the, we can see our services here. The first one is Caddy. If you're not familiar, Caddy is a reverse proxy uh, that will handle things um, like uh, SSLs and access to your different containers remotely. Um, that said, in order for this to work, you will need, say, like the caddy file, um, or the, the folder, rather, um, and you're gonna have other dependencies in here uh, that are in other folders coming back over to here. Um, so, uh, sorry, I said I said file, then I said folder. I was wrong. It is the caddy file. I apologize. I'm going on very little sleep today. Um, so they've got the caddy file right here for uh, for the reverse proxy uh, portion of that Docker Compose. There's also a .env file here um, that has uh, the Cirque's ng host name, your Let's Encrypt email um, for, for the SSLs for your instance. Um, and then uh, the workers and threads for doing uh, for doing the querying across the different search engines that you've enabled in your settings. So uh, there are uh, uh, several files that you would need if you wanted to use their Docker Compose. They might actually go as far as, as to encouraging you to uh, clone their GitHub repository so that you get all of these files and folders in the structure. Um, and then of course you would need to uh, you'd need to edit the .env file here for the, the Cirque's NG a host name and email and all of that stuff we just talked about. But there's also um, a file in here in this Cirque's NG uh, right here. If we go into this folder, there is a limiter. Uh, no, I lied, it's in the settings. And in here, there is a secret key of ultra secret key that says change this. If you clone the repository and you don't change that ultra secret key, it will throw a ton of errors in your logs. So be sure to do something like generate a long string of characters like a password generator, or uh, if we actually come back to their GitHub repository here, if we actually scroll down, we can go to do, 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 uh, step four, where it says generate the secret key and you would run this command. And then it should, in theory, uh, replace the super secret key text that's in there with, um, or sorry, the ultra secret key. So replace that with something different. Um, so that you can do that either way. But again, um, I don't wanna clone the repository. I don't wanna deal with editing all of those files. So what I've done is actually created uh, my own Docker Compose that I've, I've, I've tested multiple times. In fact, um, this instance of uh, Cirque's NG is running on that Docker Compose and it works fine. You know, I can show you if I do a search for like DB Tech YouTube, I'll give it just a second here. And there we go. So it's, it's searched all kinds of 
stuff about me and brought it all into uh, this single list. Of course, not all of it is about me. There are other DB techs on YouTube, but they do different things than I do. So uh, here we can see that it's actually working. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually take a look at my Docker Compose and get that deployed just to keep things as simple as possible. Now that said, you don't have to use my Docker Compose that again will be linked in the video description. You can always go back and clone the repository and go that route as well. But I wanna keep things simple uh, just as much as I possibly can. So this is the Docker Compose that I've put together for the sake of simplicity. Uh, I've modified some things, I've removed some things, like at the very top, I removed uh, the, the version 3.9 or 3.7 or whatever that was up there. We don't need that anymore. I've also removed Caddy, so we're not even gonna talk about that for the sake of what we're doing here. Uh, however, we do have two services remaining. The first one is our Redis cache. This will help kind of keep things running quickly by storing some stuff in memory. And there's uh, the container name, the image, some commands. Again, this is all directly from their Docker Compose. I really haven't edited anything here. Um, so all of this is very standard. Uh, if we scroll down, We've got uh, the actual uh, Circs ng container. Uh, we've got the uh, image from uh, Docker IO. We've got a restart policy even less stopped. Both of these are on the Circs ng network. Uh, by isolating these from the rest of your containers, you're actually adding a bit more security and uh, to keep uh, containers from talking to each other when they don't need to. Uh, below that, we've got some ports. Uh, basically, originally this was 8080, um, and I know that a lot of people will be using 8080, so I modified this to be 81, sorry, 8181 uh, uh, routing to port 8080 internally, but I've added this note of saying only change 8080 as needed, don't change the 8080 that's there. Uh, the volumes, I actually made this just a, like a, a Docker volume rather than the mapped volume they had before. Um, and the search, uh, uh, the, sorry, the Circs ng base URL. You want to change that for your setup. Again, I've got uh, notes attached to that as well. Uh, the workers, this was also uh, something that was in the uh, environment variable file. I've moved actually both the base URL and the workers and the threads out of, uh, out of that env file into here. There's nothing in there that really needs to be there. So I just moved it here, again, to keep things simple. Again, we've got, uh, we've got some additional stuff that I haven't changed from the original Docker Compose. And then of course, we're declaring our network for the Circs NG, as well as the volumes. Uh, for some reason, they called the Redis volume Valky Data, um, which I thought was weird. I don't know why they just didn't call it uh, Redis or Redis Cache or, or Circs Redis or something. Anyway, it is what it is, um, but I did, again, add this Circs NG uh, volume down here for the storage for our Circs NG container. So now that we've got this, we can actually come up here and just copy this, should work just fine. Uh, we'll come over here to Portainer. Again, you can put this in a Docker Compose and deploy this via a command line if you want to. If you know how to do that, you can extrapolate uh, from what we're about to do into what you want to do. So. What we're gonna do is come to stacks. Uh, we're going to add a stack. Let's see if that pasted, it did, that's amazing. Uh, so I'm gonna call this uh, circs ng, and I'm just gonna grab the IP address of my container here. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna put that right there. And I'm actually gonna change this as well. I should have changed that, but I didn't. Uh, after you've got all of that, you should be good to go. You shouldn't really need to change anything else here unless you wanna change the workers and threads. But aside from that, shouldn't have to change anything here. Uh, once you're happy with everything, you can scroll down and click on deploy the stack. We're gonna give this a couple of minutes to do its thing so that it can download the container images that it needs uh, to do this, deploy the volumes, deploy the network, and then deploy the container. So we'll come back once this is up and running. So here we are just a couple of moments later and we can see that the Circs NG stack is up, or in theory is up and running. If we click this and scroll down, we can see that there are a couple of containers, both Redis and Circs NG. Uh, all of this standard stuff for Portainer applies, uh, but if we come over, we can see some published ports over here of 8180, or sorry, 8181 and 8080. And if we click that, there is our new Circs NG instance for our searching privacy pleasure. So let me know in the comment section down below, are you using this? Have you used this? Um, have you decided not to use this? Why or why not? Would love to know all of that in the comment section down below. Um, if you wanna support the channel, the easiest and, and, and best way for you to do that is actually liking and subscribing for this kind of content. But 
If you'd like to take that a step farther, you can jump over to Patreon uh, and become a patron or become a channel member. Uh, either way, uh, you'll get early access to my content when it's available always add free access to my content and uh, get your name up on the screen there behind me and know that you're supporting me to continue to make videos like this. But with that said, I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.